My name is Matt Stevenson and I run a company called Nova Studios in Hull. Paul Burwell was uh, an artist in, in a really broad sense. He gets described as a thaumaturge, uh, which is a wonder maker. And uh, so he kind of started out in the free improvisation movement, sort of late 60s, and he had a duo with David Toop, who's a, you know, a well-known uh, music writer now and, and musician and still free improviser, sonic pioneer. And uh, so he was, in a, he was in a duo with David Toop called Rain in the Face. And then he did lots of other stuff. He worked with, uh, oh, what's his name? I uh, can't remember, Stephen Cripps, a pyrotechnician called Stephen Cripps. And did lots of pyrotechnic stuff. And then he started working with the performance artist, Anne Bean, and the artist, Richard Wilson. And the three of them uh, formed the kind of art sort of super group in a way called Bo the Bo Gamelan. Uh, who made enormous uh, sort of sonic junk sculptures? Made used all kinds of waste material and junk to uh, to make instruments, big instruments and big spectacles. And there was kind of all the elements were involved: sort of fire, water, wind, uh, rain, all sorts of things, explosions, bangs on a massive scale, which they did all over the world. And that kind of finished in the early 90s and then uh, Paul went on to to sort of inspire all kinds of other artists all over the country to do kind of mainly sort of sonic sonic and sculptural and performance art really before ending up in Hull in about the year 2000 and in Hull he kind of did a similar thing he sort of worked with lots of younger artists was a very inspirational figure lived in this uh, boathouse at the end of a park sort of in a kind of industrial part of Hull, very remote place, but still right in the centre of the city. And uh, a place where he could make massive noises and explosions and bangs and booms and do what he wanted really, undisturbed by anybody. Uh, and there his life kind of uh, took a, a different turn as well, really. He started drinking a lot and things went downhill and he died in 2007, fell over. Uh, no one quite knows what happened, possibly chasing someone off his site, possibly been drinking. No one's really quite sure, but he fell over, got a uh, hypothermia and then died a week later. And we're telling the story of, of Paul's legacy, which is, you know, that he really was a, a very sort of formative mover in kind of, you know, modern British art, really, from the, the late 60s onwards. But because of the nature of his work and because not very much of it was documented, uh, people don't know about him, but he's an amazing figure and an interesting character. The first I knew about Futures Venture, I'd always known about Welfare State International, and uh, you know a lot of uh, a lot of friends and and you know people I know were kind of influenced. Really, we you know you're a bit of a younger generation than the the, the original. Well, absolutely younger generation than John and, and that crew, but uh, yeah, you know we knew that it was a, a really important thing and uh, we first came across Futures Venture because I knew Michael Barnes Winters in Hull and uh, Barney and he'd been working in Hull and he'd seen some work that we'd done about the composer Basil Kirchin and uh, we'd made a film during 2017 when Hull was uh, City of Culture about Basil Kirchin who's a, an absolutely amazing uh, composer and musician and sort of known as the godfather of ambient and we made a film about him and rediscovered a lot of his work. So Barney had seen that and he'd also been to an event in Hull that was kind of celebrating the life of uh, Paul Burwell, which was what happened during 2017. And he'd kind of come across uh, Anne, Anne Bean and Richard Wilson and a lot of the Hull people as well who, who'd, who'd uh, worked with Paul. And I think Barney was kind of intrigued and we already knew about Paul and we got talking about him and, and and it was a kind of, maybe there's a film in this kind of thing, which, you know, Barney was talking about originally. And uh, so we looked into that, dug around a little bit and uh, thought it would be a, a great thing to, uh, to do, uh, regardless of whether we could get the funding or not. I think we'd already kind of bought into the idea of doing the story anyway. And, uh, and then we uh, applied for funding from Futures Venture. Uh, had a meeting down in London, uh, like uh, which was uh, it was weird actually. <laughs> so like uh, it was 
it was kind of like going for an interview, which uh, it probably shouldn't have been, but it did feel a bit like that. Uh, it was in a hotel, but I mean, if it was an interview, I mean, all the people there were really nice, So, but there were a lot of people. It was like sitting in front of a board of people in a room, um, but they were nice people. Uh, and sort of we we'd made a taster and uh, of the film so we we'd done a kind of five to ten minute cut with some interviews with david to richard wilson and Bean, you know so interesting characters and interesting people and the, and it was a really interesting story and that was clearly there i think uh made our funding bit and uh and there was uh, there was a, quite a bit of sort of back and forth I, I think i think there was definitely there was a quite a you know there was a good feeling and and you know and we were told that we would get the funding but there's a good bit of back and forth about the budget and how the budget was going to work and kind of questioning things that we'd put in the budget which i actually thought was really good to do that i thought it was rigorous and uh, and it's right i think if you're gonna if you're gonna be giving people decent amounts of money it's worth testing them a little bit and making sure that they're gonna do what they say they're gonna do um so yeah that went on but uh and then since then it's the, uh, it's been good actually, you know, I mean, uh, a very sort of a uh, trusting type of uh, relationship. I, I feel like there's been a lot of involvement. I feel like, uh, you know, Barney and Alison and other members of, of the sort of Futures Venture Board have, have been quite aware of what we're, we're doing and supportive and questioning about it in the right kind of way, you know, checking progress and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I've, I've found it a, a good supportive and enjoyable process and you know there's been opportunities to meet other people who got funding and I, and i've really enjoyed that as well you know it's been really interesting to see the diversity of uh the work that's being produced and uh and to sort of feel that that you're part of that is good yeah so where we are now with it uh we are cutting the interviews so we've interviewed about 25 people uh People who all knew Paul, family, friends, uh, colleagues, you know, collaborators, to piece together the story of the man. And the idea is the film will be told in, in the, you know, there won't be uh, a, a, an, om an omnipotent narrative. They'll, everybody who's involved in the film, they'll be the people who are telling the stories. And that's been great, you know, there's some uh, some incredible figures really from, from the British art scene from the mid 60s up until now. And... Uh, it's you know it's an amazing thing to talk to all these people and go through the archive and to start to see you know the man stand up in front of you you know i didn't know the guy and uh, now i i almost feel like i'm perhaps one of the people who, who in some ways knew him best you know because i've spoken to so you know we we've spoken to so many people about it so we're cutting the audio at the minute and then we'll piece together an audio cut and then uh we're planning on taking quite a kind of uh, montage uh, approach to the uh, to the b-roll so and what's going on visually so that's going to involve an awful lot of uh, stealing things so that's what we're going to be doing next <laughs>